I wonder today, do you feel you're not good enough for God? Do you feel like I'd never become a Christian? I could just never match up to what God would ask of me. just wouldn't be able to do that. I'm just, because of my past, because of what I've watched, because of what I've said, because of what I've done with my life so far, I could never be a Christian. Today we follow a man known as the Ethiopian eunuch. He was somebody who, in the Old Testament, in Judaism, wasn't allowed into the temple courts. He was somebody who was hindered from coming to God. He was somebody who, because of what's happened to him in the past, was never accepted. And here we see in the Gospel of Jesus Christ, this man finds total acceptance in Christ. He realises it's not about him being good enough. It's about Christ Jesus being good enough. And as we look down into Acts chapter 8, we're going to see three things. We're going to see an encounter, an exchange and an example. And it's a wonderful encounter. Let's read from verse 26. Now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out. On his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of the Kandek, which means the Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in the chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Here's the encounter. It's such an unlikely encounter. The Ethiopian eunuch and Philip. Well, who was this eunuch? Well, he was an an important official. He was a non-Jew. He was a Gentile. And here's Philip. He's one of the deacons in Acts 6. He's not somebody who is a top three. He's not one of the twelve who follow Jesus. He is appointed uh, along with Stephen as one of the deacons that just brought the food in Acts chapter 6. Philip's a man who follows the Holy Spirit. He's open to his leading and guiding. And earlier on in chapter 8 we see that Philip is preaching to large crowds and there's mass conversions. There's a revival taking place in Samaria. And the angel of the Lord says to Philip, Philip, I want you to go down this road, go to the desert. Not telling him what he's going to encounter or what's going to happen. This is a very unlikely encounter. The eunuch has been travelling from Ethiopia to Jerusalem and coming back again. Thousand mile round trip in this wonderful chair with his entourage, I am sure. This is the encounter in the road in the desert. But we also see the exchange that takes place in verses 30 to 34. Then Philip ran up to the chariot, heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless somebody explains to me. So I invited Philip to come up and sit with them. These two men are so glad to see each other. Philip is walking down this road in the desert. He's not sure why he's here, what God is doing. And then he certainly comes across a chariot and he hears somebody reading the prophet Isaiah. The eunuch has been to Jerusalem to find out more about this this religion. He's got a hold of, um, of the Hebrew scriptures. He's certainly got a hold of the book of Isaiah. A prophecy written 700 years before Jesus was born. Foretelling his life and his death and his resurrection. And he's so glad to see Philip because he's reading these words and he just doesn't understand who is he talking about. Is he talking about himself or is he talking about somebody to come in the future? He's totally confused. And Philip here, the master evangelist, asks him a question. Do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch goes, no, of of course I don't, but do you know? And he invites Philip up and let's read on. The passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. As a lamb before shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In this humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch said to Philip, Tell me please, who is this prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began 
with that very passage of scripture to tell him the good news about Jesus. Here's a wonderful exchange where Philip simply asks him a question. Do you understand? And he says no. And from that, Philip jumps up into the chair and starts to show him from Isaiah 53 and talks about the suffering servant, the suffering Messiah who was to come, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he points out how Christ is the fulfillment of this prophecy. And he points out that we need Christ. And it tells us here that he goes to other passages in Scripture. He could have gone to the judges and talked about how Jesus was a greater judge. He could have gone to the kings and talked about Jesus as a greater king. He could have gone to the tabernacle and talked about Jesus fulfilling that. Or the temple and talking about Jesus as the greater temple. Or the priest and Jesus as the greater priest or the sacrificial system and Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice once for all. Philip was able to to direct this man to Jesus from the passages of scripture that he was reading. But thirdly, we also see the example that follows. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised them. When they came up out of the water, the spur of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but they went away rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Asotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Here's an example of the new believer, the Ethiopian eunuch has found faith in Christ. Some say that he, he, he's asked Christ into his life, but probably more accurately, he has come into the life of Christ. He is now in Christ. Mm-hmm. He has now been adopted into Christ's family. He knows the blessings of Christ are his. He has found forgiveness in Christ. He is swimming in the grace that Christ offers. And here we see the example. Firstly, his example is To be obedient to the word of God. He knew somehow that he needed to be baptised. as an outward sign of what had happened internally. And as they are driving around in the desert, they suddenly come across some water by the side of the road. And he says, well, what's to hinder me being baptised? If I can come into God's family, surely I can be identified with my Christian family as well. And of course, there's nothing to hinder him. And he and Philip go down into the water they baptizo him they dip him under they fully immerse him and bring him back out of the water and then they come up out of the water again obedience is a clear sign of our conversion to christ mm-hmm. philip is fulfilling the great commission that jesus left and said go and make disciples of all nations including the Ethiopians." Baptizing them in in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And though I am with you always. Philip here is showing obedience and the eunuch is showing obedience as well. And the second sign is that the joy of the Lord is now with the eunuch. He goes away rejoicing yes Philip is taken away and he goes on ahead to preach in other places but the eunuch is full of joy he knows that his sins have been forgiven he knows that he is now made one in Christ he cannot contain this as we consider today I wonder are we being obedient to God I wonder in the act of baptism as a believer we've been obedient to God I wonder is there another area of our lives that we need to be obedient to God as well I wonder as well are our lives characterised by this joy Paul writes a whole letter about it in Philippians and talks about having joy in Christ I wonder in these days are we characterised as people who are obedient to God's word and joyful because of what we read in God's word I wonder today, are we like Philip fulfilling the great commission that Christ left his followers? Are we making disciples of all nations today? 
many people like the Ethiopian eunuch around the world, around our town, are searching. We're all made to worship something or someone. That's the way God has created. That's why we're so distraught that the sports on our TV are not there because we cannot worship our favourite teams. We're all made to worship. We're all searching for truth. We're all searching for meaning and purpose. Philip helped the Ethiopian eunuch to find this. I wonder who today, who could you help to find this truth that is only found in Jesus Christ? He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Ethiopian eunuch in and of himself was not good enough to come to God. I'm not good enough to come to God and neither are you. But that's the beauty of the gospel. It's not about how good or bad we are. It says that we're all bad, we're all depraved, we've all walked away, we've all turned our own way. But there's one who is good, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I encourage you to embrace him today, to turn from your sin and to ask him to be the Lord of your life. Thank you for listening today. If you have any questions or if you want to find out more about following Jesus, please do get in touch with us and we'd love to chat to you further.